Sorry, the Seahawks were grounding you out there for a second. I guess there was an interception. We're behind three to zero. So. so, so the next part of our presentation this evening, we're going to have each of the races do two questions each. So we'll start with um, Candy and Julie, and ask them to each do two questions. We have several questions that we got from the um, audience two weeks ago when we had the forum, and so we'll use those questions and just ask the participants to pick a question out of the hat. I want to make sure that there's no favoritism. to choose. Two minute time. Two minutes. <laughs> Barely go through my relatives in two minutes. Okay, just to reiterate, I know that we had some of our members come in. Um, we're running a little late, so they arrived here after we talked about what the rules were. Each candidate's going to get two minutes to respond. Whoever goes first will also get 30 seconds as a rebuttal to rebut what the other person said. Now remember, this is a debate. And so we're expecting them to challenge each other's views. I know that's not really culturally how we are. We like to talk and get along and challenge each other's assumptions. So we try to change each other's minds so we can agree. But that's not what a debate is about. A debate is trying to let each side present their conclusions and challenge each other's conclusions. So that's okay. I just ask the candidates to be respectful of the time. Follow what the timer's doing so you're not taking more than your fair share. I should just see you. So here's the first question. Candace is going to go first, then Julie, got two minutes each. Every election, candidates are asked the same questions and give the same answers. How will you prove that you are worthy to be voted for? How will you make a difference? Each election, all the um, questions and answers are the same. How will it be different? Um, to continue to work, to listen to the voice of the community, be responsive. Um, most recently, uh, we had the Love You Strong movement, which was very active in the community to get the word out about wellness, our journey to wellness. And where are we at? What are we doing? Um, there's been plenty of things we've been doing over the years. And it did start generations back. I believe our elders and our ancestors fought um, their feelings with from drugs and alcohol. And it's changed over the times. And if they didn't fight for us, I don't um, believe today that some of us wouldn't be here. So they fought to um, take care of the future, which is us today. So we work on that for tomorrow. And the Lummi Strong Movement was more services for our community. And that includes detox. We most recently approved the relocation of the care center to the old courthouse. And with that, the council directed a follow-up plan for detox. So those are some of the, one of the examples that we're working on that would be different. I Julie, do you want me to restate the question before we go? All right. The question is, every election, candidates are asked the same questions and give the same answers. How will you prove that you are worthy to be voted for? How will you make a difference? Very good question. I have to agree with what Candy uh, has shared. Um, I know that Journey to Wellness has been a, a very uh, has been advocated for and uh, a strong movement in our community for the past five plus years, uh, going back to the CMAD days. Uh, granted, we've gone through trials and errors since the CMAD days, but I believe that we've come a lot.
on it is since then in our community as well as and educating uh, other tribal communities around us. I believe that in the lines of Long Be Strong and Journey to Wellness, it is, again, I'm going to say, say it one more time and until I'm blue in the face, and I don't think I'm going to stop, is that uh, we got to start getting into the homes and the schools and working with our kids at childbirth or when they start walking and talking and whatnot. Um, I think prevention is going to be key. I think, you know, to coincide with what Ken said about uh, detox and treatment facilities, I think that's, that's got to be one of the priorities. But I truly believe it starts with prevention. We've got to work with the kids with prevention and bring our elders into the system and let them be heard, let them educate us. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be where we're at today, as well as the teachings of our ancestors. I think that in the lines of um, being a candidate here and never being on council, but I think being the ears and the eyes and the service for the people is going to be key when it comes to making a difference and changing the way things are have come along this far. Thank you. Can you have 30 seconds to move up? Thank you. And in addition to that, it's the um, to acknowledge the response to the system or to the to the symptom, and that's what we're going through right now with Lummi Strong. How are we dealing with it? Well, it's be responsive by uh, affording those services, but on the other hand, it's into, is to invest in prevention, education, and awareness. Either we pay now or we pay later. So let's invest in our youth. Hi, Shka. Thank you.
I'm so proud of our youth being here right now. I'm proud of our young adults. The parents to these individuals have, have done something right because they're sitting here today. And I believe that as we continue to, to set parameters and boundaries and, and push our kids to succeed, to go for the best, I think the negative cycles out here will begin to change. I just Okay, um, the need for changes in the children's department. There's been a lot of work going on, um, most recently in the last four years, of amending Title VIII, which is our children's code, and how do we take care of our children in the system. So Title VIII, um, with the voice of the grandparents committee, has um, been very um, instrumental in making this change. Oops. What we have known is that our grandparents didn't have a voice in our own system. So the grandparents was amending it. Um, we just approved it by um, special general council meeting. And at the last council meeting, the changes to amending Title VIII so now all of the work from the last four years will make a change in our system on how we take care of our kids. In addition to that is Title IV-E, which is the foster care um, from the federal, federal government. And how do they take care of our children? Well, if we access Title IV-E, that means we will be taking care of our children. Not the state or the feds, but we will take care of our kids. In addition to that, there's an MOA. When the state receives their, our children, how do they take care of it? There will be an agreement. Once they receive our child, we will, there will be clear lines of communication on how we take care of our children and we receive our children back. But <clears throat> those are the needs, my understanding, the need for the changes in our children's department. Hi, Jerry, you have 30 seconds to rebut. Thank you, Candy. Candy has brought up some very valid, uh, important issues that have been occurring out here. I totally agree with her 100% in the work that the council, the current council, has done in the last term, even longer. I too worked in the court system for eight years and I can see the changes occurring but we do have a lot of work ahead of us as a people as one. Thank you.
people that are getting an education to come back into the workforce and work for LADC themselves. Um, so that's one opportunity. And the other. <laughs> 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 Very distracting yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the other one is I know that Omni Nation has a lot of different economic opportunities out there that we're trying to reach for. And my approach would be finding one and being really successful at it. Doing it really well so that people can see the success and have trust in what we can do as Omni Nation. We have examples of that in our history, you know, with the aquaculture plant. Doing it really well so that people can build that trust and know that we can do it. And I would say um, putting more investment in the Gateway Center that we have there on I-5, really making that marketable so that it's there for artists and small business owners but that place should be packed. You know, we put a lot of time, investment, and money into that place, and we should be doing a better job about promoting it for for people in our community. Nice, yeah. Thank you.
did you say? What's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> I hope. This is the next question. Our Constitution and our Code of Laws need to be amended and rewritten to fit the needs of our growing community. How do you see us making those changes? How important is this to you? <coughs> Good question. That's you, man. I was going to say, how a gentleman can be <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, this uh, Constitution has been, it's been on the agenda for many years. I've been on it for 15 years, and that's been on there. I think we've got fun chains on there. If you we have the 18 year olds to vote, I think it's great if you got the 18 year olds to vote. But one thing that's always been back in the my mind is you know, on there for a long time is the chairman. You need to have the people voted in the chair. It's real important, and that's the way they vote most of the time. We're ready, you know. You know, because right now, every year, we go on there, I've been in there for many years, and they, they keep changing the chairman. The chairman gets in there for only for two or three years, and then you change again. You know, that's, that's good. We need to get people in there so they can get some longevity in there, so we can keep on the mission going. The chairman, so, you know, it's, it's such a thing that I think that we really need to have the people vote in our chairman, our vice chairman, treasurer, you know, and so on. And then also what I, I really believe in too is that we need to have, you know, the core of the, of the general council needs to be changed. You know, right now I think that we only have 50, you know, people that, you know, my family can be the general council. You know, we have more, my family has, we have over 200 people in our family. You know, so I feel that we need to have the constitution changed to at least maybe 200 for the general council. That's something I really, I really believe in. So, thank you. Our Constitution and our Code of Laws need to be amended and rewritten to fit the needs of our growing community. How do you see us making those changes and how important is this to you? There's three-year terms for the council positions, and some of the work that I did was let me venture to look at economically viable Native communities. And in the most economically viable, the council had um, longer terms to make a difference. Um, it was usually four or five years. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change that, but what I've heard a lot about is the actual officer positions and how those are changed annually. And so when you're in that position and you're starting to make changes and make a difference, you're kind of at the whim of the issue of the day. So it kind of hinders us from planning ahead and planning forward. But in terms of that, there's not much I would change. For the code of laws, I think that we really need to stay grounded in our values and who we are and our code of laws should reflect that. I've been working a little bit with that with um, new to the Law and Justice Commission. We've been working on changing titles and codes that actually fit and work with our community. So that's the only suggestions or changes I would make. I should. Merle, you get 30 seconds to respond. Um, you know, um, also, you know, you know, this tribe is, is a grown, grown tribe. What's that? Anyway, it's a real grown tribe, you know, and, um, and, and we need to kind of change according to what the needs are for, for, the, for the nation here. And, you know, what is, what is the self governance tribe? You know, we are a self governance tribe, I think that we're going to change it to, to be <laughs> self governance bylaws. It's real so important that we said we're going to do it, but we still need to change it. You know, so we are also the, the codes. You know, we can change or you know, match up. Uh, we got a lot of codes here that we can match up. The Constitution and the codes that gotta match up. All right. All right. So it, it is 7:30.
seven to three now. They punched it in, so Seahawks are ahead. Thank goodness. But we're in here. We're going to move on to position A. Dig deep now. Rose. Rose. What's your favorite color and why? <laughs> oh, this is a moment faster question. Um, but good for these two ladies who have both been on council before. What are your goals for the families in London that have been affected by dysfunctional childhood from drug abuse and sexual abuse? How can we help those affected to make changes to rebuild their families within the nation? Thank you, Chair. Medical professionals, 
make them addicts. Let's acknowledge that. Let's fix that system. You know, but you know, I applaud the work. Let's keep going. Um, the children prevention. You know, Sauce talked. Um, Jules talked about prevention and intervention. Once that happens, all these money issues will go away, and we can really do family things. But we got to get into the houses. It doesn't cost money to, to sit and visit, to cry with them, to hold them, to pick them up when they need you. That's just my personal perspective. Chair, you have 30 seconds to rebut. Thank you very much. I had recently attended the tribal council meetings of, uh, I believe it was July and September. And looking at our $135 million budget, we still don't have enough money to help these families. We don't have enough money to help the dysfunction of drugs and alcohol. We don't have enough money for treatment. We don't have enough money for scholarships. You know, when they come out of treatment and they're, they're, they're going to college or maybe back to school. And we have got to have the resources so we can have the staff to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Service available. People that go through our ports could do community service, cleanup, 
by, um, you know, we have lots of trucks around, we get hauled uh, debris away from couches and whatever that have been dumped down at the river or whatnot. But yeah, we've seen a lot of things here in the, the many years we've been here. So I think that um, I would like to see our roads improved with infrastructure. I want water and sewer and electricity on some of our roads so people can have scattered houses there so they're not all stuck in a clustered home site. Ouch. I think that would be really valuable and we really fight for infrastructure that it takes money, it takes planning. And I think that with all the employees we have, you know, maybe we can have a department clean up a road. You know, one department gets this road, one department gets that road, and they keep that clean. That kind of thing. So I know um, the children, my grandchildren, little Caleb, he says, Grandma, don't throw that tea bag out the window. <laughs> it's not good for the environment. <laughs> but yes, that's, that's what we need to do. The kids are learning, and we just love them all, and we want them to have a beautiful reservation. Thank you. Thank you. Cheryl, you have 30 seconds to reply. Okay. I want to rebut with myself, like I just said. But um, I would like to, you know, I looked at the audience and seen Jonathan and Lane sitting there. You know, I know the hard work he's doing with our people that are coming home, but we really need a public service department for our tribe. Our people can be trained and employed to run the public works, not just to clean up the beaches, but to maintain our roads, to maintain the infrastructure that we have. Um, so my apologies, to Jonathan, that's kind of where I was heading with that was uh, we need a public work department and that will help maintain our beautiful reservation. Thank you. Thank you. What is your favorite color and why? Thank you. Oh, snap. Only three questions. This is a six-part question. This is a six-part question. Put it to me. There's um, four question marks. Oh, my goodness. Just pick one. <laughs> okay. Do you support the food bank and energy programs? Are you aware of the need in our community? What will you do to help support these programs? How important is it to you? Yes, yeah. Steamer. Yeah. 
gas out here in all our homes, thinking, you know, that that was going to be suitable for our people. But just like anything else, the demand for it, you know, increased the price of fuel, propane. So, you know, I'll, I'll support that any way that we do it or if it comes forward. So, it's good. Victor, you have two minutes. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> yes, I support, I support that program. Uh, I myself have used that program at least once. Uh, I'm a single father, and it's helped me out a lot. You know, I used it when I first got my son. I was just trying to figure out my whole finances because I, you know, I have my son full time, and I needed, I needed some assistance, and that was there for me. And I'm very grateful for that program. There's a lot of things that um, we can do as a community to pull together. We've done it in the past, and we can do it from here on out. If if people need something. Uh, you know, everyone sends out an email and all of a sudden somebody has some resources and I think that's a great way to support our programs. And, um, you know, uh, people do like to come together and they do um, support one another. And just like uh, Steamer was saying, yes, we don't, we don't uh, judge people and uh, I think that is one of the greatest things that uh, we have as a community. And uh, thank you. Actually, Steven gets 30 seconds to respond. Sorry, Stephen gets 30 seconds to rebut. No rebuttal. And it goes back to me. Next question. Next question. <laughs> I just had to think about all the things that I've done uh, for, for my community and try to think of the top three things that I've done. Uh, one, I work in natural resources, um, in water resources. Uh, it's a very important job for a lot of our shellfish uh, community, that people that go and harvest shellfish. And so my job is to keep the shellfish beds open. Uh, if I don't show up to work, then they close down the shellfish beds, and then all this, all these people don't get to work as well. So that's one of my things. Um, another one of my uh, things I do is I. Um, sorry, I'm getting nervous. I'm trying to calm myself down a little bit. Um, I have a small coffee business. I'm, you know, I, I try to uh, give out some of my coffee to some of the people that can't afford coffee, and. Um, when I visit people, so I, I go out and I say, hey, here's some of my coffee and I can afford it. And, and, but, um, you know, I try to give back to the community where I come from. Um, and uh, I try to pick up hitchhikers when I can. <laughs> you know, they, oh, they're shit. just trying to get somewhere. But they're uh, people from our community. You should not be afraid of them. And, you know, they're just trying to get somewhere. Sometimes oh, they, can't, uh, they can't make it anymore. Oops. Just try to help out where I can. Stephen, 
Ocean. You didn't see me on the way up here? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't take that route. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's barely past seven. 